Hey, Luke. Good, uh, good afternoon. Um, can you can you just uh, give us an update in terms of uh, how you guys look today at practice, and if you're seeing the progress that you want to see, knowing that uh, the scrimmages start a week from today? Yeah, uh, we, it was a good practice. It was short today. We wanted to kind of get guys in, in and out, and uh, off their feet, um, but with a focus on on you know competing, scrimmaging. What not? So a uh, solid day. We're seeing uh, seeing the progress we want, and uh, happy again with the energy we got out of our guys. And just just to follow up, uh, Rashawn, I, I was trying to make sure I got the clarification. How many days does he have left in his self quarantine? I think he'll be back with the team on the twenty second. I think is the date he is cleared to be with us again. And will you in, slowly integrate him in, or will he? Do you think? 10 days is uh, it, it's different with everybody we'll see where how he looks uh, he, he he you know that, that much time off he wouldn't be put right into contact drills but we'll see what kind of shape he's in how he's moving and then we'll make the decision from there um to james ham hey luke how are you good good are you starting to get some sort of normalization like with just your routines and being in the bubble at this point, or is it still very foreign? No, it's getting a little more normal. Um, however, that normal gets uh, <laughs> the, the the fact that 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 this is becoming more normal is a little becomes a little strange. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, we're we're in a pretty good routine. Uh, you know, we get uh, you know guys are, are feeling comfortable around around the. Uh, the bubble now and I think the next challenge James will be in the next week to come this is where it's you know it's gonna uh, from a mental standpoint as far as like people starting to really miss family and, and not being able to do other activities I think will be the next challenge that most teams are are facing coming uh, coming up um, okay and, and did you get uh, did you get Buddy Hill and Jabari Parker fully back integrated in today I mean were they at least able to do some contact uh, buddy did more than uh, Jabari did they came over early um, and we had them you know do two on two uh, scrim buddy did two on two scrimmaging and uh, they both did went through a conditioning program with our our strength coach and then buddy, uh, Buddy did about probably about seventy five percent of practice today. Uh, Jason Jones. Hey Luke. Hey Jason. Hey. For, uh, first thing, I know you've mentioned Daquan. Uh, you got Justin back. These are Kyle. These are probably guys who might have been in a summer league situation this time of year. What's the benefit of being able to work with them so directly right now, and just how much better are they? for maybe having an experience this time of year where they're going against, you know, typical NBA competition? Well, yeah, I think summer league would be great. Uh, is great for, for young players just because they get to play all the minutes and get all the reps. Um, but with where we're at, this opportunity is, is good for them too. And they're with us, they're with our group. They're getting, uh, they're getting crucial reps in, in, in practice and um, most likely at least in the, the preseason games, they'll be getting some some meaningful minutes as well. So uh, they, they they do a great job. From the time we've got got them to, to where they're at now, they've all done a really nice job of working and, and improving, uh, and, and are much better players uh, right now than than uh, when we originally grabbed them. And when it comes to Corey, you know, you signed him just last month, but at that point, you you had Harrison as well. How do you Considering that he hasn't played since he played with you got uh, the Kings last season, is it realistic to to try to put a lot on him right now? Just kind of how are you working with him? Yeah, he's he's, he's been going. great. He he's been great. And part of the reason we wanted to pick him up is because he played with a lot of these guys uh, on the Kings. I coached him uh, in LA, so the the relationship is already there, and we know how uh, you know the potential for how crazy this whole. Uh, bubble thing can, can be as far as players coming in and out and we just felt like everyone had a very uh, a great comfort level with Corey and he's everything we've asked him to do already is, since he's been with us we've been playing he's played the three he's played the four and today when uh 
when Harry or Marvin needed a sub, we even got him in at some five today, uh, and he, he was great. So that's the, the, that's why you have vets like that. Uh, that's why you want him on your squad, and he's done a really nice job so far. Sean Cunningham. Hey, Luke, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Wonderful. Um, just in terms of uh, Kent Bazemore, can you just talk about where he's been most impactful uh, on this roster in, from your perspective? Yeah, he's a, that's a, it's a long list. Uh, his his professionalism, uh, the way he takes care of his body, I think, uh, is a great example for, for other guys on our team. Um, it, his, the way he communicates, the way he talks, the way he defends, uh, all these uh, all those things are are have been been huge for us. And, and he's he's fit in very nicely. The team the teammate his teammates love him. Uh, he really enjoys being around. Uh, works, you know, works, it works his tail off. So it's it's really a, a long list of things where he's come in and helped our squad. Right on. And then uh, lastly, for me, uh, just it was mentioned previously about the scrimmages starting up in a week. Is that coming at a good time for your guys? Do you you know? Is it would it would you prefer it sooner or later? No, it'll probably be a good time. Um, you know, at some point, your players get sick of playing against each other and, and practices turn a little sloppy. You know, every single play call that's happening. So it, uh, it, it, it'll come. It's, it's coming at a good time. Um, and, you know, I, I think our guys are going to be looking forward to playing against other people. Um, Mark Dembski. Mark, unmute yourself. You got me okay, Coach? Yeah, I got you now, Mark. Okay. All right, Coach. Uh, you know, with, with the games, what can we expect when, when these scrimmage games get going and you got three of them and then, you know, you hit the season running? I mean, how, how, what's your approach? And, and, you know, are you pretty much going to, you know, use everybody? Well, I, I think our, it, our, our approach will be different than um, – you know, let's say the the Toronto game that we're going to play. I think teams that are coming in this trying to make that last playoff spot uh, are going to approach these preseason games uh, with much more of a sense of urgency. Um, now, that being said, we're not going to play any got anybody 40 minutes and, and risk anything like that. Um, so you'll probably see more uh, more players on the roster get in. Uh, but, you know, th these are important games for us, and, and we have to uh, – you know, we have to kind of see where we're at and then obviously look at those games as where we need to focus cleanup uh, leading into the next practices. And just to follow up with Buddy, uh, how did he look to you and, and were the guys excited that, that he was back there on the court with them? Yeah, guys were excited and, and he looked good. Uh, he's he hasn't played basketball in a while, so it's going to take some time. But uh, Buddy's he, he, he's one of those rare athletes that he can play all day long without ever getting tired. And he's not back to that level. Um, but I think because of that, uh, he'll be back quicker than most people who have been out as long as he has. That's Sam Amick. Hello, Luke. Sam, how are you? Good, man. Good to see you. Um, hope you're hanging in out there. I wanted to ask you about, for you and, and every other coach out there, I've been talking to coaches just about the, the mental health component and how unique of a challenge it is for people in your position. I mean, you got players who are now out of their comfort zone, no family, different routines, and, and you've always put such a premium on the relationships and things you've learned through Phil and Steve. And I just kind of wonder, how are you attacking that, that part of this challenge here? Yeah, so the um, that's it, a real part of being out here, and uh, you know I think so far we've been in a pretty good place. Uh, guys have been pretty busy, um, but the NBA uh, provides some some people that are experts in that field that are in the bubble. So we we're working to get one of them scheduled to come in and talk to the team. Um, as much uh, communication and activity as we can do as a group, uh, we're, we're encouraging to do, whether that's, you know, they got little little boats outside the hotel or just our team meals. We had them put ping pong tables, anything we can just be together more and socialize uh, as opposed to in the room isolated, uh, I think will be a, a big step in the mental health part of it. Just a quick follow on that. As this time goes on, and let's say you guys can win some ball games and maybe even get in the playoffs, will you as a coach have your radar up for 
you know, not only where these guys are at personally, but, you know, some coaches I've talked to are worried about a ripple effect on just the competitive spirit. If you get players who decide they're just not feeling this, you know, this experience in Orlando anymore, maybe it, it affects them on the court. How do you see that? Yeah, I don't. I don't see that being a problem. Most most players I know in this league, especially when you get into into playoffs and, and that type of atmosphere, uh, I know the crowd won't be there. But uh, most players at this level, uh, when you get to that, uh, they're they're going to be bought in. So, uh, you know, we try to approach it one goal at a time, and that first goal is to. Um, you know, to get to to July 31st, ready to ready to go, and from there we try to make a, a playoff push, and, and that's kind of where our focus is. But I wouldn't be too concerned with with players losing interest as long as they're on teams that are continuing continuing to move forward. Just a couple more, Coach uh, Jason Anderson. Hey, Lou. Um, I'm going to put a couple things on the table real quick. Are you able to hear me? Okay. Yeah, I got you. Okay, I missed the first minute or so, so I'm wondering if there was any update on uh, Alex or Harrison and when they might come out. Um, number two, you mentioned yesterday Marvin and Harry were getting all the reps. They were the only available bigs. Is there an issue with, with Belly? Is he not available? And along that line, um, how many guys do you have in practice right now? Um, no update with, with, Har with Harrison and Alex. We're still waiting. You know, they're still in protocol back in SAC. Um, nothing wrong with Belly. Uh, Belly is a big force, but I'm, I'm talking more of the, the five, uh, five spot. And we use Belly at the five at times, but, um, you know, we, we, and he's played a little bit of five here. So, but we're just talking about in general, uh, with, with that position. And the third, what was the third part of the question? It, it sounds like you have 15 in practice then. Um, Yes, uh, with with Buddy and Jabari being limited uh, right now, not they, they they were not full participants in practice today. I got you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Paulo, you you getty from the Ringer. Hey, Luke. Uh, I'm wondering if, just given the size limitations to the traveling party whether you or anybody else on the staff or the coaching staff has found each has found themselves doing different jobs or more jobs than they're usually used to. Oh yeah. Everybody. That, that was part of the talk we had before we came. It's all hands on deck. So uh, if you're a trainer and you see that a basket needs an extra rebounder, uh, get out there. So, uh, you know, if you're a coach and you see that the equipment manager is trying to carry seven bags down the hallway, grab a couple of those. So, we all know what our primary jobs are uh, for why we were brought out here. Um, but with the, the limited numbers, we expect everyone to double up and help uh, help wherever possible. Uh, last one, uh, Matt George. Coach, a pleasure as always to talk to you. Hey, Matt. You mentioned earlier uh, Corey Brewer got some time playing uh, at the five, filling in for Marvin Bagley. I was curious, are you running Bagley – for the most part as the center as the five and in, in most sets are you giving him looks at four as well yeah i mean we wanted to do both but for right now with the the bodies we're at we're we're playing them mainly at the five um but when we we, we sit with him and teach with him uh we're gonna you know he's gonna be somebody we play at, at both positions but in the limited time we've been here in the bubble most most of his reps have been at the five